to see you. Good to see you. I'm glad we can have a chat together. So I picked you up at your home. Yes. Um, How do you like this view? It's beautiful. Right? Yes. So um, we're taking small steps, but it's, uh, I think, synonym for where you're coming from. You started when you were 14 years old. 14. Tell me a little bit more about your start of your journey about as an entrepreneur. About my journey. Well, um, my parents, they uh, moved from the Netherlands to Germany. Um, there they, they uh, started uh, a hotel, their own hotel. Okay. And actually I helped them with their online marketing and the website and all this kind of stuff happening online. Um, yeah, when I finished doing that, a lot of other people asked my parents uh, who, who did this job. <laughs> and uh, I ended up having a lot of clients when I was 16 and uh, also international companies um, based in Berlin. I had to go to Berlin. With, uh, with my backpack and they didn't believe that I was the guy working with them. So, yeah, it was quite exciting. Uh, at that time, mobile websites were completely new and I was the, the one who introduced it to, uh, to a lot of companies. So that's how the journey started. So you were 16 years old, right? Mm -hmm. When you had your first proper business meeting. Yeah. How was it when you walked in as a 16 year old with, with school bags, right? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, with a school bag. <laughs> I went to Berlin by train. Yeah. And they already worked uh, with me for one and a half year. And um, yeah, when I, when I entered the building, they were like, are you Dylan we are, we are speaking to the whole time? I was like, yes, I'm Dylan, but I was young, yeah. but they already knew what uh, I was capable of, of doing online. So they were even more uh, surprised and excited to work even more with me uh, together. So yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, a very nice beginning of the journey. Yeah. yeah, It's one hell of a story to be an entrepreneur already as a teenager. And how, how did you feel? growing up um, because your, your, your young, younger peers at yeah. that time were not in that same mindset, but no. you were already making business, making money, doing propositions. How did you feel as a teenager to do that? Well, I was still at, uh, at school at that time. Um, so I had to explain the teachers why I was on my phone all the time. <laughs> uh, a couple of teachers understood why. Yeah. Uh, other teachers didn't really believe what I was doing. Yeah. Um, and of course... What did you tell them, by the way? I told them I had my own online business. Um, yeah, um, exploring everything online, like advertisements, uh, Google ads, uh, funnels. It was quite uh, new at that time. Email funnels and, and so on. Uh, but at that time, those teachers didn't really understand what was happening online at that time. Yeah. It was pretty new, so... I mean, still for a lot of companies, doing that is still, uh, you yeah. know, not normal. But you were doing this stuff, what, like 15 years ago? Uh, it, it's now 15 years ago, yes, yes. Wow, wow. Yes. And um, you transitioned uh, into having multiple companies. Mm -hmm. uh, you had your first hotel, if I believe, when you were 21. Yeah, How my, did you end uh, up with a hotel? Well, my parents separated at that time when I was 21 and my mother wanted to live in the Netherlands, uh, yeah, back in the Netherlands. And I saw a good deal to buy a hotel on the uh, island of, uh, of the Netherlands, Tessel. Yeah, we do uh, have islands. Uh, right, right. <laughs> Not a lot of people know, but, uh, but yeah, um, I went there. Um, talked to the owner yeah. and uh, the hotel was not running that fine at that time, but it was a good opportunity, a good investment for me to, yeah, to, to try and, and uh, build a nice hotel of, uh, of it. Okay, so you, you still had your businesses yeah. running and then you added also a hotel mm -hmm. towards that. Yeah. How did you manage to juggle all those different balls at the same time? especially yeah. so young? Well, I, I traveled one and a half year back and forth from Germany to the Netherlands. And at some point I was like, okay, this is not, not going to work for me. Uh, so I sold my client portfolio uh, of the German clients to an agency in Berlin. 
Okay. Um, I focused for one year on, on setting up the hotel. And in the meantime, I started to um, build another online marketing agency, but built, um, based in the Netherlands. And from there on, I also built up the, the online marketing client portfolio. Um, the hotel was, was running very well. Um, so yeah, I had time to explore new, um, yeah, new business ideas and, and possibilities. So Dylan, what are your active portfolios right mm -hmm. now? What are you involved in? Mm -hmm. And what is your, uh, your businesses? Um, well, I still have my online marketing agency in the Netherlands. Um, of course, I also do have some clients over here. Um, but in the Netherlands, I also have a company called La Direct. Um, this company is focusing on uh, advisory and installing charging stations for electric vehicles. And um, yeah, I started that company three and a half years ago. And yeah, we are now the, the well-known company who can provide any business or, or consumer uh, to charge their car. Yes. You told me once that people said to you when you wanted to start this business that mm -hmm. you were crazy. Yes. Don't do it. Yep. But you went ahead. Yeah. Why did you go ahead and what made you think you're not crazy? <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, if you uh, know how the market um, reacts on, on online marketing, then you know a lot of where it goes, you know? so. I had the feeling uh, back in the days when I started with the mobile uh, first websites, I was the first one because I saw where, where it was going mm -hmm. at that time. And this is the same story with the electric cars, right? Uh, nobody wanted to drive electric, but the government was pushing it, etc., etc. So nobody did online marketing based on the market at that time. So what we have done is we built a configurator where people um, can answer a couple of questions and then they uh, will see uh, the two or three charging stations which will fit their needs. Mm. And so we made something cool about something not cool. Yeah. And yeah, that, that was uh, the key to, um, yeah, to grow this company uh, where it is right now. Do you, do you like the idea of um, being a first penetrator into a market, being at the start of a cycle? Um, most of the time, yes. Um, but it's very hard because to accelerate, you have to find things out yourself. You cannot ask anybody. But I think that's something, uh, yeah, which, which is fitting for an entrepreneur, you know. Um, if you are the first one, um, you have a step ahead. But, um, yeah, you have to work hard for it. Yeah. Uh, but you have to be creative. I like to be creative every day. When yeah. there's a problem, I think in possibilities, and, and yeah, um, that, that makes me uh, doing uh, everything. And are you not afraid that people be watching you mm. yeah. and then copying you because you're one of, one of the first people in the cycle? Well, we have a couple of competitors, they wanted to copy us with our ideas, but as soon they launch something which is similar to ours, we are already launching something different, which mm. is even working better. Nice. So they will always be struggling to, uh, yeah, to catch us. <laughs> yeah, I like that, I like yeah. that. And um, come, let's go for a little walk. Um, yeah, sure. So let's, let's talk a little bit about um, if you if you if you got any help in business or not, mm. did somebody help you out in, in a major way when you were in business at any given time? Well, I have to say, almost everything I had to do myself, aside with my business partners, I have of course. Um, but I never had somebody who gave me advice or, or anything. Um, I don't know why. I didn't really think of. You know, um, asking people, I didn't have really the people around me who I can ask the questions I had at that time. Uh, but I'm, I started in Dubai with having conversations like with you or other entrepreneurs here in, uh, in this uh, area. Um, and it helped me a lot to, to build on my businesses uh, currently. Yeah. So, yeah, so you did so much despite uh, 
getting any support, despite having the age supposedly that is required, um, and still you uh, managed to uh, succeed. Um, we're going to talk about that later as well, but is that one of the things that inspired you to write your book? Well, that's one of the things. I think um, when I was back in school, for example, um, the teachers were telling my parents that I was very low educated, like I had to go to a very low educational school. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought by myself, why? Because I was different. I was always looking out of the window because yeah. in, in the classroom, what I didn't that? learn what I wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So Let's look outside. Yeah. And, yeah. Now I look outside my window and I see this. Yeah. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's very, um, it's very hard for people or, or kids who have different way of mindset yeah. to, you know, um, uh, to learn the things in school which they really don't like. It, yeah. it will not motivate you. So that's also one reason I wrote that book to inspire other kids. Um, yeah, to to be themselves and go for it, you know? Yeah, and, and how did that make you feel that teachers told you mm. that you will amount to not much, that you were not a, a bright kid, especially now knowing what you know? Well, it's, it's difficult for the teachers too, you know? They also learn to screen kids based on what they have learned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't really think it's a personal thing. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, it's more a thing which society is right now. Yeah. And yeah, you, you have to step out yourself um, to manage to, to do the things you really want. Yeah, I mean, I, it's just becoming a, a common theme now, which I'm seeing with, uh, with successful entrepreneurs like yourself that I'm talking with. and in general successful people doing well mm -hmm. that uh, they struggle you know in school yeah. um, and um, but they succeed in the real mm -hmm. life um, what has been some of the toughest decisions you needed to make in business to succeed mm -hmm. and and what has been some of the most uh, yeah, yeah most beautiful decisions you 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 needed to make or found well, out making? I think it was the time when I bought the hotel. Um, you are talking about uh, above a million. Um, yeah. I didn't have that money at that time. Yeah. Uh, I had view money, yes, but uh, I needed the bank to, yeah, to, to, pay, uh, to pay the hotel. And um, at that time I gave like um, a guarantee on the shares of one of my other companies. So means when the hotel was not going to work, they, uh, they were allowed to take my, uh, my other company. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the, the hardest decision I have made. But um, yeah, you have to make some decisions in your way, some big decisions to make some big steps. Yeah. yeah. And, and what, what made you come up with that solution? Was it you mm -hmm. yourself that were like, okay, you know what, I have an asset here, let's do an asset swap for bank financing? Yeah. Uh, of course, I had some uh, a finance advisor. Yeah. Um, this advisor um, was working with me for a longer period of time. Yeah. And uh, he went with me to the bank and do all the introductions and, and uh, finance-based uh, stuff. Um, so that really helped me because when you come in, in the bank with 21 year old yeah. and you want to make a big step, then you need some confidence, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, they need an adult in the room. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> They're like, you know, <laughs> we yeah. want to give you our money. <laughs> but it was really fun though. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's like, yeah, they never saw somebody step in and, and come with, with this story and uh, come with these go the, those goals. And yeah, you're the one. So yeah, yeah it, it, it's fun. Yeah. and. And what have been some of the, the beautiful moments you, you experienced in your journey as, a, as an entrepreneur? On which side? Personal or you mean? Whatever you want. Whatever. Well, I think, um, yeah, I have a view, 
But um, one of the things is when I bought my own home in the Netherlands, I think that was one of the goals I had when I was very, very young. Um, How old were you at that time when you uh, well, when you bought it? Um, first, I bought the hotel, right? Yeah. I didn't even have a car at that time. Yeah. I spent all my money in investing, and when I was 20, 23, 22, 23, I bought my own uh, dream home. Okay. And my dream car all based on the investments I, I made uh, back in the days. Yeah. So I, I switched everything. Normally people are buying first their dream car on a loan yeah. and then their house and then they think about the business. And yeah, I, 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 I switched yeah. these, this, yeah. this mi mindset. You know? I, I, don't, uh, I actually agree with your method more mm -hmm. because uh, it's better to purchase assets first and let them accumulate in value over time and then you reap the benefits later yeah, sure. even more yeah. uh, instead of just delaying and you know, having not really putting your time and money in assets. Yeah. Um, but, but then you, were, you made the decision mm -hmm and um, you ended up selling as well your hotel, right? Yes, yes. Um, and of course, for a higher value. Yeah. Uh, which again happened because you made that decision before. Yeah, yeah. Everything come back to you, what, yeah. you, what you do in the, in the back days. So um, I'm happy about that. Um, at that time, a lot of friends were asking me why you don't buy your dream car, yeah. why you don't buy a house. Yeah. Because I knew how how the world works. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. That will come. That will come. Just a little bit of patience. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> so, Dylan, we are sitting in your electrical car. Yes. Coincidence that you are in the electrical business? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, right? This is my uh, my car for during the week. Um, but of course. I also like uh, petrol cars, but I think, uh, yeah, now you see me in a different way. Yes, <laughs> definitely. So how is the electrical uh, charging industry in Dubai? How do you find it? Because you own an electrical car yourself now, you need to charge uh, your car. Yeah, well, at my place, we have a public charger uh, at our garage, mm -hmm. um, so that's fine. But um, I'm also working on a project here in the UAE uh, providing uh, public uh, charging uh, uh, stations um, and I did a lot of research the, the past two years and actually currently there are only about 700 public chargers um, which is nothing compared to what we are used to in the Netherlands um, so there's a long way to go um, and yeah I think um, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, see, I'm seeing myself to yeah, solve this problem here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I think, uh, you know, when you have a certain uh, experience and you, you have done something before, yep. you cannot see a place anymore the same. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, that's the whole thing, right? I'm always, when I walk down the street, I'm always looking at some points, also other businesses. Uh, their signs on, 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 their, uh, on their office building. Yeah, I process everything and think about why did they do this? Why don't they uh, put this there? And yeah, it's, it's the creative thinking uh, yeah, I'm, I'm used to. Yes, and uh, I, I'm just curious about something. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, because um, how do you come up with great business ideas? What makes Dylan think? Well, I think it's... It's something you have to feel. Of course, I have a lot of ideas, but um, I've learned I have to focus on certain projects I really believe in. So as soon as you have an idea and you are really into it and you believe in it, I think that's the one which you have to choose. Uh, you know my, what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. And we are now... Uh in Dubai, and in, in case the, the viewers don't notice, <laughs> sometimes we uh, we have viewers um, also outside of the GCC. They don't uh, recognize the landscape here. Mm -hmm. But you have come from the Netherlands to Dubai. What made you uh, come? 
Well, um, the first time I was in Dubai, it was in 2016. Um, it's a couple of years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And this country really um, yeah, gave me the energy uh, and the people around you with the same mindset and everything. Um, I think that is something not another city has, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so in 2016, I was already thinking one day I want to live in Dubai. And as I told you, uh, I sold my uh, hotel two, uh, two years ago. And um, four days after I sold it, I uh, came to Dubai to show my girlfriend um, yeah, what, what is Dubai about. She, she didn't know what to expect at all. So we were here for one month. We extended to three months. Okay. And in those three months, we made the decision to, to move to Dubai. Uh, we both had the feeling this really fits, fits us. And um, yeah, we, we can explore new things, new uh, opportunities. And um, yeah, I, when we were in Dubai, I called my real estate agent and he, he sold the apartments and my house in, in the Netherlands. And um, yeah, to, to start all over uh, here in Dubai. That's not a small thing to do, right? No, it was literally um, packing your stuff and, and just go. And uh, we are on our way now to uh, one of your new projects. Yeah, uh, yeah well, it's, um, it's a combination of investments. Um, investments in real estate but also we provide uh, property management services here in Dubai for other investors. It, it started with our own apartments and uh, I was sharing a lot on, on LinkedIn and, and social media and then a lot of other friends and, and people I know, they asked me questions, how it does it work to, to invest in Dubai? Um, can you maybe also manage uh, this, this property for me when I invest here in Dubai? So from the, uh, from the on, uh, it started to, to be something natural and, and now we um, manage almost 12 um, apartments and uh, another 10 will add up uh, in the next couple of months. So um, yeah. It's a nice portfolio building up there. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. And we are on the way to uh, one of your own apartments yes. that you bought. Yeah, this for, is the last uh, one. Yeah. 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 Um, so we're going to have a look at that and, um, and see uh, yeah, what, you, what, what you're doing in your free time. <laughs> well, um, this is really, for me, it's more a side business to, to set up. Um, my girlfriend actually is managing uh, the properties. Mm -hmm. She makes sure that everybody is uh, getting the check-in experience and a clean apartment and uh, the 24-7 uh, communication with the guests. Um, and yeah, I think because we have a lot of um, experience in the hotel industry, yeah, um, yeah, we really want to give the yeah the people who um, yeah we come to visit Dubai as a hotel experience even that they are not staying in a hotel so we combine yeah the our ex hotel experience with yeah um short stay uh, short stay apartments i like that i like that and again you know things from the past mm -hmm. come back to the future yes yes that's what i'm saying yeah it's nice yeah and maybe who knows maybe this fits better for you um mm -hmm. Because a hotel can be quite in intensive to yeah, run. 24-7 goes on. Here it's the same, but I have to say it's easier in Dubai because you can call somebody and they can come and, and fix anything in the apartment right away. In the Netherlands, it's, it's not working like that. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard to find people to, uh, to have somebody available to, to fix some, some things. And, um, yeah, this is more scalable in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, I experienced the same thing back in the Netherlands. And, uh, it's hard to explain to people that don't know about it, how things are here and how easy it is and how much, how willing people are to, to take on a job and to, uh, to manage your uh, maintenance of your 
uh, of your property and while well, in the Netherlands you know, it's just uh, very uh, difficult you know yeah it's it's very different uh, I think also Dubai is built based on uh, tourists you yeah. know so everything has to be easier everything has to be nearby and yeah um, yeah quickly accessible um, and because of that yeah it's it's easier to, to build a, to build a company like this and and you've been here now around two years, right? Yeah. yeah. How do you uh, how do you manage your business while being abroad? Well, for the businesses I have in the Netherlands, um, I have more a advisory role. So it means um, I check the numbers, I check the processes, and um, I give advice to. Yeah, um, uh, to the manager in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. and he is implementing my ideas and and, uh, and so on. Um, and after he implemented it, after one or two months, depends on on, on the things changed. Um, I will look at the numbers again. Uh, I will look at um, um, yeah all the processes again, and I will compare it with the with the previous uh, period. And based on that, I give give advice to yeah make it ev make everything more efficient um, and better uh, within the company uh, so I'm not operational active anymore uh, but it's more yeah the brain stuff uh, I have to do do you like that to have this this transition into this role um, I had to get used to it because on the other hand I'm sort of a control freak I think <laughs> but since I live in Dubai um, yeah, things has changed. I yeah. had to manage my companies in a different way. So everything moved the way I, I really wanted. Um, so that's, that's really funny because when we moved here, my girlfriend told me, okay, you cannot do this because you're such a control freak. Um, but yeah, you will be always a control, control freak if you don't change anything in your life. And now I have more freedom. I really do the things I'm very good at. Mm -hmm. um, I give more responsibility to to others, so I can think more about future uh, future things and and um, yeah, um, fixing problems in the company uh, in a different way. Um, you know, when when I'm working during the day, I take my laptop, go to the beach, um, and write down the things com coming up in my head mm -hmm. and when I'm home I will make a plan a whole strategy I give it as a package to one of my managers and they will implement it in in the company it's 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 unbelievable uh, that, that, that it's possible when when you saw me three years ago in the Netherlands I from eight o'clock till two in the night I was working in the office managing ask uh, um, giving answers to all the questions of the employees I was working my ass off uh, mm. but um, because this changed now um, I'm not working inside of my business but I work at my business mm -hmm. and I think that's uh, one of the key points uh, you have to learn um, yeah to, to scale up your business yeah and um, did that, that happen naturally yes yes I didn't really choose for it. Of course, I chose for it to move to Dubai, but everything formed uh, formed like like it had to be before. Yeah. Do Do you feel a little bit like it could have been meant to be, that things went the way they went? I think yes, uh, because I have one more uh, thing to say why I came to Dubai. Yeah. When I was in Dubai in 2016. Um, I met one uh, Dutch guy, he lived there already for six years at that time and I was, I was talking to him uh, at, the, um, at the moment my hotel um, went sold within a couple of months and yeah he told me why you don't move to Dubai I was thinking about moving to Sweden or, or anywhere but he really inspired me at that time and yeah he told me okay come to Dubai I will show you how it works and from there on uh, yeah I made the decision so it's it's 
nice how such uh, how so many things from the past helped me to to settle here. Yeah, it's uh, it all comes together sometimes, huh? It's uh, but at that moment when you met him, you were in a different. Uh, situation and you were too much in it you know yeah, yeah. To, to think that you could leave yeah I made a job for myself actually that's all I did but now it really gives me freedom and uh, work on, on yeah, the next steps for for this uh, these businesses yeah I uh, I think you've done a fantastic job Dylan and at such a young age you you have done what you have done and you're still having so much drive and ideas um, sometimes uh, do you feel that it feels a little bit overwhelming you, you're like is it real am I am I living in a dream well um, I grew up uh, building businesses so it's not new mm -hmm. but it's a new way mm -hmm. so everything I worked on the past years um, everything I worked on the past years um, now gives me the life I, I was looking for maybe um, you know if, if you are always humble and, and you do your thing you build your business um, you're not really thinking of, of this life that's not where you're doing it for yeah you you work on your your kids your your business yeah you know um, and it comes in a natural way that, that this life is becoming more accessible and, and more for you. Um, so it's not really something you, you work on, you know. I didn't start my business when I was 14 to, to live in Dubai or, or to... You're, you're um, living day by day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I understand what you're, what you're transcending there and... Um, it grew to, to something much more and, yeah. and now you reaping benefits in ways you maybe never even thought about that you will uh, make those steps. Um, what is for you um, a nice, comfortable uh, place to be in? It is, would it be Dubai for, for a longer time or would it be a combination of different places? Uh, are you restless? Um, well, first of all, I really like it here and I don't think I will move out soon or later. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, I want to build some, some things in Dubai to a level I, I expect me to, uh, to be able to. Yeah. Um, as soon as I accomplish that, I think I want to... Um, you know, have a break for one or two years and travel more, see more from of the world. Yeah. Um, but maybe that point will never be there for me because I'm so excited to, to build on, on businesses and things. So I have to teach myself to have more peace yeah. where I am now and not looking in the future too much. <laughs> we uh, arrived at your uh, building where you have the, the apartment that you're renting out. So uh, yeah. let's uh, have a look at the place. Yeah, I will show you why, um, why you choose for uh, Bavaria Square. Okay. Um, we, as I told you, we rent it out as a uh, short-term holiday home. Yeah. And um, yeah, you have to see it yourself. It's very, yeah. European style. Okay. The finishing is very modern. Mm -hmm. uh, if you walk here, then you have the feeling to, to have a holiday. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I want to live here too, but uh, now it's for, for the investment. Investment first, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well done and uh, very nice swimming pool. Have you tried it out or not? <laughs> No, no, I didn't have time for that yet, but uh, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks I will, uh, I will try, yeah. So, uh, this, uh, this is a project that you have dived into now for, uh, for the foreseeable future. You would just keep adding more Yeah, I will properties. keep adding more properties as a short-term holiday home. Yeah. 
uh, I think it's it's a good good investment. And here in Dubai, everything is is built on tourism. Um, a lot of Europeans are coming, and that's why I uh, was looking at this project because yeah. uh, it's very how do you call it? very modern style uh, we are used to in, in, in the Netherlands, for example. Yeah. And um, yeah, you have everything. You have a high-end gym. Um, you have a nice pool where you really feel like you are on holiday. Yeah. Um, so I think this really fits uh, fits the needs of uh, of a nice holiday. Home. Yes. It looks like you want to dive into it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, in the in the cent center of the community. Yeah. That's. I saw there was also a clubhouse. Clubhouse. There yes, on the yes. ground floor. Yeah. Yeah, and you can work over there. It's very nice. Yeah. Uh, furnished and uh, yeah, you can uh, work with your laptop. Um, yeah. That's the, the new way, right? You know, you're working from home people nowadays. They, yeah. they, they just have a different place where they can sit down yeah. and work, go to the swimming pool and go back to yeah. work. <laughs> you have to combine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I guess we're going to go upstairs now yeah. to your place. On the left side, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, so here we are on the second floor. Mm -hmm. This building has three floors. It's it's quite low. Yeah. Um, but it's it's um, it's very long. So uh, yeah, it looks yeah, like a hotel, different. you know, like uh, yeah. these hotels where you have these yeah, long corridors. True. Here it is. Wow! So, welcome. Looks wonderful. So new. Yeah, you can smell it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, as you can see, one of the things um, which is very important is the decoration. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's the furniture too, but you have to fit some, some decoration stuff to uh, stand out on the internet um, because everybody's looking only uh, at the pictures. And uh, yeah, that's why we, uh, yeah, um, took it took some energy to find the stuff here in Dubai to fit the, the way of feeling uh, we wanted to, uh, to show. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we did a good job on the end. This looks really wonderful, like you really want to just sleep here and stay here. Yeah. You, have done, uh, you and your partner have done a fantastic job. Thank you so much. I'm sure you're going to be very successful with this. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, like this is one of, uh, of the short term apartments in our portfolio now. Yeah. But uh, if somebody is coming to us and asks us uh, to manage their property, um, then the first thing we do is decoration and check the furniture. Mm -hmm. Because without uh, those things on point, it's very hard to uh, stand out on the internet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we always start with a uh, free personal consultation uh, based on, uh, on the property itself. So, yeah. So people watching, you know who to contact. <laughs> uh, and uh, also, uh, just I wanted to also ask you uh, before, you know, we, we round up this conversation. I wanted to ask you also about your, um, about your book, mm -hmm. uh, The Power of Resilience. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's in Dutch. Yes. Um, the Kracht van Doorzettingsvermogen. Yeah, you, you said it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you wrote this book. Um, how special is this book for you? Well, I think I, I started to write this book um, as soon as I made the decision to uh, sell my hotel. I think um, it was the right time to stand still and, and think back what, with everything which has been happened in, in the past years. Um, so also for me, it was more um, to clean my head with, with the past mm -hmm. and um, I wrote down everything I've learned, every decision I had to make, uh, had to make myself uh, and how I dealt with it. And um, yeah, this, this book is more like, um, yeah, to, um, to finish that stage, that, that yeah, that uh, chapter of my life and um, it's funny actually, the book was finished at the day we moved to Dubai. 
Um, wow. So it, it really fitted in, in, the, in this period of time. Yeah. You closed the, the book, yeah. Final Words, and a new chapter opened. Yes, of course. So maybe a second book uh, <laughs> is in the making, but uh, um, yeah, I'm very happy to, uh, yeah, to launch it uh, soon. I'm very curious for it and uh, extremely well done on, on, on writing that and doing that as well. Uh, I think it's also nice later to look back on yeah. having something tangible from your time written yeah, down. Yeah. Um, how are you um, focused now on helping other entrepreneurs and young people to succeed in life? Because mm -hmm. I believe that is also something that is on your mind, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I have some um, young uh, entrepreneurs I help um, yeah, scaling up their business or restructure their business mm -hmm. or um, helping them to make the right decision. Um, I think a lot of young entrepreneurs are feeling lonely. I think that's one of the things we, we know. Um, and yeah, I help them um, yeah, to, to think clearly and um, make their decision based on facts. Um, and I'm, I'm making myself happy too, to see them grow and to see them succeed and, and being proud of, them, of themselves. So um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a nice mix of um, yeah, of uh, my entrepreneurship, um, like building my own business, but also helping others uh, yeah, for the new chapter of their life. Yeah, and you also dedicated a website, I believe, <coughs> yes. to which this? Yes, it's uh, dylan.nl. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to tell you what I have paid for that name, but uh, I'm the only real one now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, this, uh, this website is uh, now launched uh, last week um, and on this website you can also uh, pre-order my book, uh, which will be available soon. So you heard it, please have a look at Dylan.nl and this was the amazing Dylan story. I hope you enjoyed it and Dylan, thank you for participating. Thank you Simon for, for having me here. Thank you. Thank you.